Hello and welcome to another episode of A Gay in the Life. Today we have a special guest with us, Joey Graceffa. Hi guys. <laughs> so we're going to start today by playing a quick little uh, LGBTQ quiz. I'm yes. going to be so bad at this. So am I. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> hey, when I was researching the questions and looking everything up, I had no idea about most of the answers either. But okay. that's what we're here for. We're just going to learn a little bit about some fun yeah. LGBTQ plus trivia and, you know, pop culture, that kind of thing too. So, you each have a buzzer on hand. I will ask the question and do all four answer choices, and then whoever buzzes in first gets to answer. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay, let's see here. Um, the suspense. Oh my God, I feel like I'm gonna pee. <laughs> this one, I did not know the answer to, but here we go. In the TV show Ellen, what was the setting of the character's iconic coming out scene? Oh, it was a magazine. Was yeah. it like an apartment? Well, let me do it. Let me do the multiple choice. Oh, oh, oh okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> We're like, we have to do the answer. <laughs> okay, okay. A, in an airport. B, at a Jewish deli. C, at a public pool. Or D, in a hospital waiting room. A hospital yes. waiting room? No. <laughs> okay. I'll just go at the airport. That's right. Wow! Ding, ding, ding. Oh it. <laughs> Next question. Which show was the first to depict a kiss between two men on US primetime TV? Okay, wait, wait. A, Roseanne. B, Will and Grace. C, Dawson's Creek. D, Frasier. Yes. Will and Grace. Uh, what? I thought that too, but no, it's not. Frasier? No. <laughs> Such bad homosexuals, yes. <laughs> well, I know it's definitely not Roseanne because that is a super conservative Very show. Very true. So I'm gonna go with, was it, did you say Dawson's, Dawson's Creek? Creek? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Was it Wow, really? a show ahead of its time. <laughs> and that was in uh, May 2000. So Will and Grace have been around for a while. 2000, holy shit. I know, isn't that crazy? All right, uh, next question. How many countries have legalized gay marriage as of August 2020? Okay. A, 78, B, 29, C, 112, D, 61. 29. That's right. Wow. Yeah. 29. 29 countries. We need out. to get that number up. <laughs> That's true. Out of 195 countries, only 29 have legalized same-sex marriage. Time to get to work. Time to get to work. That's right. There's work to be done. Next question. Which of these divas has won the most Grammys? Okay. A, Beyonce. B, Mariah Carey. C, Aretha Franklin. D, Whitney Houston. Oh my god. Beyonce. Yes. Yeah. Oh, queen day. Queen. <laughs> For life. So Beyonce has 22. Mariah Carey has five. Aretha Franklin, 18. Whitney Houston, six. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Beyonce. Beyonce mm. got it. Whitney deserves more. This is one from my uh, good old stomping grounds back in Texas. Okay. Great. Sodomy was illegal in Texas until what year? Sodomy? <laughs> Sodomy. Oh my god. Okay. A, 2003. B, 1977. C, 1994. Or D, 1989. 1977? No. <laughs> I'm gonna go with the 93. Was Nin that an answer? 2003. 2003. 2003, that's right. That's right. Another until point 2003? For Joey. Yes, until recently. It sounded so ridiculous that it had to be true. I know, in Texas. Yeah. In Texas. Next question. Which two U.S. presidents have officially acknowledged Pride Month? Okay. Okay. A, Carter and Obama. B, Bush and Reagan. C, Clinton and Obama. D, Bush and Nixon. Clinton and Obama? Yeah! Yeah! So you got a yes. Of course, that, I think that was kind of the... Well, it was a 50-50 because yeah. Obama was in two of those. That's true. Yeah, we knew it was one of them. Remember the lighthouse when it used to be all... Rainbowy? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> that was nice. The good old days. The great. Next question. Which of these playwrights regularly wrote plays with thinly veiled homosexual undertones? Mm. Okay. A. Arthur Miller. B. Tennessee Williams. C. David Mamet. D. Eugene O'Neill. Tennessee Williams. Yes. Yes, like a prophet to your queen. I knew that. <laughs> I didn't know any of those, so... <laughs> you, you need to get on that some was... Tennessee Williams. <laughs> Two more questions. Which country holds the record for holding or hosting the largest pride parade in the world? A. United States. B. Netherlands. C. Brazil. D. Iceland. Yes. Brazil? Yes. Yeah! Brazil. They've had the largest pride parade 
for about 20 years. We interviewed someone from Brazil recently who mm -hmm. talked about that. But the statistics about like gay rights and stuff there were still kind of great. Sure. Okay. Last question. Oh god. Last question. All right. Okay. Which Britney Spears album is the best? <laughs> this is my subjective opinion. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> A. Circus. B. Glory. C. In the Zone. D. Blackout. Blackout. Yes, of course. 2007 <laughs> Britney. That was obviously the best one. Oh god. Are you gonna keep keep doing the buzzer? Blackout. 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 <laughs> The final tally comes okay. out to six to three. So Joey wins. Oh, wow. Congrats. Good job. You were an LGBTQ I expert. I was going to be <laughs> a loser. <laughs> I know that we've gotten a lot of questions about the coming out experience and what the right way is to come out. And we, I think you've experienced similar things, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we wanted to kind of tackle the answer to that. Because yeah. uh, I think it feels like a big mystery to people who haven't uh, blaze through that trail yeah yeah we, we've just had so many people saying what is the right way to come out right and I know that after you came out and you presented uh, you you had your music video oh, yeah. um, that was kind of like a soft coming out right for you well and, I I thought it was gonna be a soft coming out but no it was the full-on deal <laughs> like I was like oh people will like maybe really think I'm gay now and then they're <laughs> yeah. like oh my god we're so proud of you yeah yeah, yeah. So then I was like okay this is my coming out video I guess right mm -hmm. right because you mentioned too that you uh, initially, you planned to come out in the chapter of your book, yeah, right? Exactly. And it didn't really work out that way. No. <laughs> <laughs> Why was that, you think? Why didn't it work out that way? Well, I think me kissing a boy was like the confirmation. <laughs> I feel like my closet was actually like a beaded door closet. So like people really knew that I was gay. They just a rainbow needed, like, beaded door. They needed something. Yeah, exactly. They needed like some little thing for me to confirm and that was enough. Okay, yeah. okay. So and since then, what has the reception been like from like your fans? Um, it was really shocking because I still had the mentality of like when I grew up of like, oh my God, like this is not okay. Like mm -hmm. people are gonna like judge me because I started YouTube in 2007 and that was like always the first comment. So many comments are like, oh, it's Joey Gay, it's Joey Gay. And mm -hmm. I used to think that that was like, um, like people bullying me. Mm. And I was so offended because I didn't come to terms with that with me. So, oh, right. Um, it wasn't until I finally like came to terms that I was gay that I mm -hmm. had to start building up that confidence to right. then be able to openly express that online. We all live in LA. Mm -hmm. It is kind of a, a liberal bubble to yeah, some extent. Yeah, it's definitely a bubble for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I think, you know, people that live in in uh, more conservative areas or maybe more rural areas or where people may not be as progressive or open-minded, sure. what what type of advice do you think you would have for those people in terms of coming out? Um, yeah, it's tough because everyone's situation is so different, mm -hmm. but I always say like, first, like come out to someone that you already know is like, it's gonna be down. An ally. Be, yeah, exactly. An ally. Because um, yeah. that kind of like takes away a lot of the pressure because then it's like, oh, you have a friend who you can like confide into mm -hmm. and then get advice from them on like the situation because they'll probably know what situation you're in a little bit better than like someone like right. me who literally doesn't know anything that you're going through. Right. Um, so that would be like my main advice. But honestly, it doesn't have to happen at any like rate. Do it when you feel comfortable. I did it when I felt confident in who I was. Mm -hmm. right. I think that's a big thing. You have to first come out to yourself and then accept yourself because mm -hmm. once you feel confident with who you are, then it becomes a lot easier to express that to other people. It has to be at your comfort level with knowing that you're confident in the, in any reaction you get because whatever is positive is gonna feel so embraced and so lucky. You're gonna to have to go through a process of understanding that if someone isn't okay with it, then they probably shouldn't have been in your life in the first place. Yeah, I also got to a point where like those hate comments or like just the comments about me being gay didn't mm -hmm. affect me anymore. Even though I wasn't out, right. it was like, I don't care if you say that I'm gay because I am. Yeah. But, like, you can't hurt me. Yeah. That's who I am. And mm -hmm. like, I'm proud of that. So since you've, I, cause it's been a few years since you've gotten to go through that process, mm -hmm. right? Could you express any like positive, uh, maybe like a positive and a negative, or it would be really helpful and inspiring for people to see that like, oh, X is something to look forward to. And maybe B is something to, you know, be weary of. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I personally think that I built up the negative more than there actually was one. Right. Yeah. Like before coming out, I was like, this, this, and this are gonna happen. It's gonna be like the worst thing ever. Mm -hmm. And when none of that happened, I was like, oh, like I created this monster in my head that wasn't even really there. Right. Um, yeah. 
But yeah, the positive was definitely just kind of becoming my true self. Like, just mm -hmm. like right. fully embracing my inner gay and just like <laughs> yes. being free. Like I, I started painting my nails and just like, yeah. you know, like being more feminine with myself. And right. um, I don't know, I, I just felt so much more freedom. Do you remember the first time that you verbalized to another person, I'm gay? And do you remember what that felt like? Yeah. I was out to dinner and my friend was just like, so are you like seeing anyone or like dating anyone? Right. And Did you couple... plan on saying it beforehand? No. Oh, okay. I mean, it was kind of like bubbling up because like a guy asked me out on a date and I was like super like nervous and scared. And I was yeah. like, I need to talk to someone about this. <laughs> yeah. So she like asked me and I was like, well, actually like a guy asked me out on a date and she's like, oh, and she like acted totally normal. Like it wasn't oh. like a big deal at all. And I was like, oh, it's like, it's not a bad. No, <laughs> okay, I'll tell you more then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank yes. you guys. This thank you, fun. Joey, so much Yay, for, for chatting with us today. And yeah, we're, we're looking forward to watching more of your channel and hope that, um, you know, you keep doing what you're doing and inspiring young young oh, people all around you. the world, but yeah. also young queer people. And I also yeah. can't wait to see you get more kittens adopted. Yeah. Oh my God, fingers crossed. <laughs> Anyone out there who has pregnant cats, send them <laughs> send to, them to Joey. Me. Send I'll all the pregnant cats. <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys for watching The Gay in the Life. Bye, we'll see you next time. Bye.